Hello and welcome to episode 6 of how to compose cinematic music for movies, TV shows, and video games. In the last episode we started writing our first ever theme. In today's episode we are going to talk more about harmony and some of the important features of harmony and how it can help us tell interesting musical stories. So let's hop right on over into Ableton and take a look at some chords. Okay, so here we are in Ableton. Let's take a look again at the chords we have available to us in C minor, which is going to be the key that we are going to be using in this first set of videos to really learn about theme writing. We will expand to other keys at a certain point, but for now we're just gonna stick to C minor. So let's open up the piano roll and take a look at our chords. Okay. Okay, so in the last video I talked about how the D diminished chord, our two chord, is a little bit tricky and how we're going to avoid it and just stick to the six chords that we've got on the screen in front of us. So let's talk about these chords a little bit. We've got C minor, E flat major, F minor, G minor, A flat major, and B flat major. So in our theme writing we talked about eight bar structures and how the most common place to start writing your theme is using this eight bar structure where we start on C minor and end on either a G minor or a B flat major. And the reasons behind those decisions and more are what we're gonna be talking about in this video when we talk about chord functions. So when we're looking at these six chords that we do have available to us, we've basically got two different versions of chords, two different types of chords. We've got major chords and we've got minor chords. Now, the reason for this, I'll briefly go over, but I know that there are a bajillion videos on this and you can just Google it pretty quickly. Since major and minor chords are all composed of three notes, really what this comes down to is the spacing of the notes. So to get a major chord, we start on a note like C. We go up one, two, three, four. And on that fourth note, we get our major third. And then we go up one, two, three. And on that third note, we get the fifth from our initial tonic note, in this case, C. So because we went up four notes and then three notes, we've got a major chord, in this case, C major. If we reverse those and go up three notes and then four notes, we get C minor. That's all it is. So this is why our fifth is always going to stay the same, no matter the quality of the chord. What determines the quality, and what I mean by quality is major versus minor, is going to be the third. Now a diminished chord and other types of chords can be affected by the fifth. Uh, so the fifth isn't always there, but the perfect fifth when it comes to major and minor chords is always going to remain constant. So the perfect fifth from C is always going to be G. And a C minor chord is just going to have the C, E flat, and G, and a C major is going to be C, E, and G. So when it comes to the spacing of the scale, as we move up our scale, due to the spacing of the notes, we've got, we go from C to D to E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C. If I play this on the piano. You'll notice that not all of those spacings are the same. Going from C to D is two notes what we refer to as a whole step, going from D to E flat is, a, is one note, what we refer to as a half step. So in a minor scale, we're going whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half, whole, whole. And this is what creates the minor scale, is that progression of whole and half steps. And because it's the same exact progression no matter where you start, if you start in A minor, it's gonna be the same thing. We start on our A and go whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole. And we get A minor, which just so happens to be all the white keys. And this is how we can have both a major scale and a minor scale be using all the white keys. It's about the chord, or excuse me, not the chord, the note that you're starting on, the note that you refer to as home base, and then the spacing of the notes from there. So to stick to C minor, because we've got this spacing, it just so happens to be the case that the one chord is minor, the three chord is major, the four chord is minor, five chord is minor, six and seven chords are both major. And from this, it's an awesome scale to write themes because of the fact that we've got both these three minor chords and these three major chords 
all within our key available to us to use. And this creates for all sorts of interesting opportunities for telling really interesting stories. So now, as you probably figured out in the last video, if they took the time to try and come up with a couple different versions of different themes using the parameters that I gave you in the last video, you'll discover even though we're only working with six chords, figuring out the ordering of the chords is really challenging and can feel really random and a lot of the time isn't gonna give you the sound that you were probably hoping for. And there's a reason for this, that actually chords, we need to start thinking about them insofar as the function that they play in the theme writing. So this is where we get a little bit meta and take a step back and talk about what it is we're trying to do in telling cinematic music. The most basic form and, and the most basic purpose, I should say, of cinematic music, right? When we're talking about music, which is meant to go to movie, is we are using music to tell stories. Although you could probably certainly say that this is the case when it comes to pop music, it's a little bit different. We're really using music to enhance a story, to better tell a story. And in this way, we want music to go on the journey that a lot of movies go on. We want to start at home, go on an adventure, go somewhere far away, and then come back home. And it's, it's the sort of adventure, it's the journey of going somewhere far away from home, doing all sorts of crazy things, and then the sense of finality and peace and calm that is returning home at the end of the movie, assuming it's a happy ending, that gives us this sense of finality. And this is what we're looking to do with our chords, is give the listener this sense of journey. And so if we start to think about the chords in this function and how they're helping us tell a story, it's going to help improve our theme writing. And once we get to these sort of technical forms of writing themes, when we talk about the period and the sentence form, understanding the purpose of the chords in our key is going to be really helpful in telling interesting and compelling stories. So let's talk about the three different types of chords that we're going to find in minor and in this case C minor. So the first thing that we're going to talk about are referred to as tonic chords. Now tonic means home. It sounds like home. It hasn't gone anywhere. It's incredibly stable and is that gives you that sense of sort of either beginning a journey or finishing a journey. It really is, it tends to fall on on one of those extremes, not really extremes, but one of those edges of telling our story. Now it doesn't mean that we can't use them throughout the way to sort of help our listener come back home and remember where it is we came from, to use that sort of cheesy <laughs> movie expression. But this is going to be the purpose of our tonic chords, is this sense of home. So in C minor, we've got three chords which are we're going to refer to as tonic chords. We've got our C minor, which is going to again be our C, G, and E flat. Let me erase the chords on our screen and just pay attention to the notes that are previewed over here on the left side of the screen, right over here. So our C minor. I changed it to the, the C minor scale so that you can see all the notes I'm playing. So we've got our C minor. And remember that this is still a C minor, even though I'm not playing it like this. I'm playing it like this. This is still a C minor chord. We've got two more chords which qualify as tonic. We've got our A flat major and our E flat major. So this is going to be our one, our three, and our six are going to be tonic. They're going to sound like home. Now, of course, C minor is going to sound the most at home because it is the key that we are in is C minor. So the C minor chord is going to sound as home as it gets. But why is it that A-flat major and E-flat major sound like home? Well, let's take a look at those chords. If I wanted to play an A-flat major, but play it as similarly to the C minor as possible, how could I play it? Well, I could just play it like this. Now look at what's happening here. Our C minor, we're changing one note to get to this A-flat major. It's this G up to the A-flat. So I've, if I voice it with the A-flat in the bass, which is, is the sort of technically correct way to play an A-flat major, if you're referring to it as just an A-flat major, even though we're moving two of those notes are the same. The E-flat and the C are in our C minor chord and also in an A-flat major chord. So because of these two common notes, this is still going to sound very at home. Now let's look at the E-flat major. We've got E-flat and B-flat and G. 
Now the E flat and the G are both in C minor, so this is going to sound like home. Now, this is very subjective, but it's just my opinion. I think that the E flat major sounds slightly less homey than the A flat major because it doesn't have the C in it, but that's sort of getting into nuanced territory that isn't really what we're trying to talk about right now. But for the purpose of telling a story, it's helpful to know that these are going to be our three tonic notes. So these are going to be great places to remind the listener of where we started, of home. So if we're writing a theme in C minor, this is the reason why I wanted you to start on the C minor chord, was to establish to the listener that we're in C minor. If we start here, this is where the listener is going to assume, okay, well, that's home. That's where we're starting. Now, the next group of chord functions are what we refer to as dominant chords. Now, they're not dominant in the sense that they're sort of overpowering. They're dominant in the sense that they want to go back home. The only thing you got to remember with dominant chords is just that they want to go back to the tonic. All they want to do is go back to the tonic, right? So the dominant chords in C minor are going to be our G minor, our five chord, and our B flat major, our seven chord. So if I play this C minor chord, And let's say I go to my A flat major. And maybe to my E flat major. And then back to my C minor. This works. It certainly works as a chord progression. And it sounds right. It sounds musically correct. But there's not really this sense of going on a journey. This transition from our E flat major back to our C minor doesn't really sound that satisfying. It sort of sounds like we're repeating the sentence we just said, but maybe in a slightly different way uh, or, or in a more definitive way or something, but it doesn't really sound like a satisfying resolution. But now listen to what happens when I use this dominant chord, the G minor, to add, just add, adding this G minor to the progression and how much it enhances the sense of coming back home. So I'm going to start on the C minor again, to A flat major, to E flat major, to G minor, back to C minor. There's this real sense of going from C minor to G minor, Now, if I voice these a little bit differently, we can even get this to sound even more satisfying. We can go from our C minor, plays, played in a sort of closed voicing like this, to a G minor, back to the C minor. And now we get that real sense of we've gone somewhere and we've come back home. So this is the dominant chord, right? It both wants to bring you back to the tonic, but it also functions as a good first step away from your tonic. That first step at the beginning of your journey that's so hard and so difficult and so challenging to make and the feeling, as is in real life, of not knowing how to take the first step is also very true in writing music. How do I begin to move away from home without this sounding random or unpredictable in a non-musical, non-enjoyable way? Well, one of the most reliable ways to do this is to start from your tonic and move to your dominant. It's going to be a very safe first step away from home. C minor. I could use the B-flat major, too. Do you notice how, how interesting that move to the B-flat major is and how, much, how it gives this sense of having moved somewhere in the way that when I go to the A-flat major, it still is a nice chord to hear, but it doesn't feel like you've really gone anywhere. So I'm going to play this again. Here's the C minor to the A-flat major. So C minor, A flat major, back to our C minor. Now let's go C minor to the B flat major, back to the C minor, and listen how this feels like we've, we've taken a step and then come back inside. So this is dominant. Th these are what dominant chords do. They are close to home. They really want to go home, but they are not home yet. The reasons for this will make sort of more sense when we talk about things like voice leading, but we're not going to get into that right now. This is just one of my sort of take my word for it. And hopefully just by listening to that, you can hear what it is I'm talking about. 
Now, of course, we have one more group of chords to talk about. And this final group of chords are what we refer to as predominant chords. Now, predominant chords do the exact same things to dominant chords as dominant chords do to our tonic chords. So predominant chords want to go to dominant chords. And if you're on a dominant chord and want to go even further away from home, then you might want to go to a predominant chord. So if we're in C minor, and we go to a dominant to get away from home to our G minor, if we want to go even further from home, now we can go to the F minor. And then now listen to, if we go back to our G minor and back to our C minor, this real sense of having gone away, coming back home. In that case, I use the A flat major as the sort of sense of coming home. It's a little bit more of a hopeful feeling of coming home because we've moved to our major chord. And everyone's heard the phrase that major equals happy, minor equals sad. But really that depends on the context. In this context of having gone from my minor one to my minor five to my minor four, moving away from home, in other words, we've gone tonic to dominant to predominant. And then from the predominant, we wanna come back home by going to the dominant and then to a tonic. But instead of going back to the G minor and back to the C minor, I went to the A flat major because I wanted a happy resolution, right? So let me do this again. Now that sounds like an interesting musical journey. And this is where chord functions are really gonna be massively helpful in our theme writing. So let's take all that information. I know it's a lot, but let's just take it and go with it and write out a chord progression to see how we can use this, these tools to make a chord progression which actually begins to sound like it's going on an interesting musical journey. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start with a C minor chord, good old C minor. Let's go up an octave. Now let's stay at home. Um, let's not go anywhere yet. We're a little nervous, so we're gonna go up to any flat major. And now we are going to, let's say, we're gonna take a, a big leap away from home. We're gonna, <laughs> we, we were nervous that first time, but now all of a sudden we're gonna really go far away from home. So we're gonna go to our F minor. If I just leave it at that, that sounds like, oh, wait a minute, where are we? <laughs> what are we doing? Um, because we've got we've made this step from tonic to tonic to predominant, that doesn't sound resolved. That just sounds confused. So one way to resolve this would be to go back to our tonic. But this might be a little bit aggressive and not necessarily what we're looking to do. And I also want to turn this into eight bars worth of chords. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give the resolution of having gone from a predominant to a dominant, but I'm not going to go from the dominant to the tonic. So I'm going to go from this F minor down to a B flat major. So here's what we've done. We've got four chords making up half of our eight bar theme here that we're gonna write in this video. And we've gone aggressively away from home and then started to come back home, but we're not all the way home. And so what this allows us to do is to feel like we're going somewhere, maybe coming back towards home, but wait a minute, there's still, a, there's still more music that needs to be written because we haven't made it all the way back home. This is sort of what this B flat major or the G minor is providing us. And it's why I wanted you to finish the theme from the first video on this B flat major or G minor was because it gives this sense of coming back towards home, but that we haven't made it all the way. So the purpose of that first eight bar theme was to write a theme which sounded like it was musically complete, but not a complete piece of music, if that makes any sense. It sounds like a complete thought. It is a complete sentence, which makes sense, but it ends on a, sort of maybe not cliffhanger but it ends unsolved it's not the end of our journey so ending 
the first half of our eight bar theme on this dominant is going to give us this great sense of we've got a, I don't want to call it a complete thought, but it, it, it sounds like a good pausing point. And, and these sort of pauses, these breaths in our music are massively important. We can't constantly be going crazy with crazy chords or the ear is just going to get overwhelmed. So let's listen to what this sounds like. So that to me, all of a sudden, just in adding that B flat major chord, this sounds like it has potential for being the first half of a good theme. And that is because we're taking into account how we're using tonic, predominant, and dominant chords in the progression. So now let's finish this. Let's write an eight bar theme that's meant to just be eight bars of music. Let's bring it all the way home. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to follow this B flat major chord. I'm going to go back to a tonic. I'm going to give this sense of having gone predominant to dominant to tonic. But this isn't the tonic we want to end on, right? Because we're in C minor. So we're giving this sort of false hope where we're coming home, but very quickly we realized we're coming home in not the right way. And this is going to propel us forward into our final journey away from home and then back into a real resolution back at home. So I know a lot of this sort of going on a journey, going away from home, it sounds sort of cheesy and it can feel a little bit cringe and weird and sort of like too formulaic and not really what we're doing in the music making process. It's supposed to be just pure raw creativity and what sounds good. But you know, when you think about someone who sits down to write a movie, a screenplay for a movie, right? There's a reason that we've got this sort of three act structures in movies that is so common and works so well. And it's because <laughs> we've got, a, it's because telling a story we've got expectations about how it's done. And so going out and telling a story which completely defies the listener's expectations, you might eventually get them to enjoy it, but initially it's gonna turn them away. And like it or not, this is just the case with music. We've got a certain set of expectations, but so many of our favorite movies perfectly follow this three act structure in the same way that so many of our favorite songs follow the standard four chord progression that, you know, if you go on YouTube and search up the search, the four chord progression, you're going to get all these videos of the, all these pop songs that use the same four chords. Creativity, I think is not being afraid to use the formulas and to understand what is there and what has been given to us and what has been studied and what we know works well. It's using them in new ways. It's finding new and interesting ways to tell different versions of this sort of same story. We've got an expectation that a story starts in a calm place. It gets somewhere where there's rising action, there's a climax, and then there's an ending with a resolution. And the fact that a story follows that progression doesn't mean that it's a bad story or a good story. It's how the story is told that makes it a bad or good story. But we've got to tell a story in order to tell a story. I know, what a sentence, right? But it, we've, got to tell, we've got to take a journey musically in order to have something interesting to listen to. So don't get turned away from the fact that you're really sort of trying to follow these rules and think about them in the beginning. Because getting these down and getting really good at them is actually going to open up more creative options in that once you're comfortable with this, then you know how to tell an interesting musical story. And from there, you can go and make interesting, unique, creative decisions. So anyways, let's get back to the theme and get back to where we were. So we've got our tonic, tonic, predominant, dominant, tonic progression so far. And we're using this A flat major to start the beginning of our second half of this theme. So let's now move away from home and then come back home. So I've gone ahead and completed the chord progression from the A flat major. I wanted to play around for a little bit and see what I wanted to do. So let's talk through what's going on here. After our A flat major, we've gone to this G minor chord, which is functioning as a dominant. So this time we've taken that sort of first initial step away from home. We've come back to home that isn't quite exactly home, but still is home. We've gone to our dominant. And now, instead of going to a predominant and going somewhere really far away, we're gonna go all the way back home. And here's how we're gonna do this. We're gonna use what's called a musical cadence. A cadence is musical punctuation. So I know, I'm throwing a bajillion different things at you in this video. We're gonna keep going over them in future videos. I'm just sort of introducing them as they come to mind and as they seem to make sense to me. So what a cadence is, is punctuation. So here's what we're doing. We're going back to this A flat major, then to our G minor, then to our C minor. 
we've got this sort of tonic dominant tonic and but because the tonic the first time is the a flat major to the dominant of the g minor back to the tonic of the c minor this is going to give it when you listen to it this real sense of finished this is all the way perfectly back home and one thing i've done just to make this sound a little bit more interesting and spicy is i've introduced the use of some seven chords and i'm going to talk about more about how to use those in later videos but using seven chords in your cadence is going to be a great way to help give this sense of completion there's going to be a little bit of interesting new instability added with this a flat major seven and so the reason this is this is a seven chord right is because if we start on our a flat and call that one because we're on an a flat major chord then we go up to two three four five six seven we get a g in the same way that when i start on a g and call that my one because i've got a g minor chord and i go up two three four five six seven we get this f so that's what it means to call something a seven chord is in the key that you're in you start on that note call it one and then go up to the seventh note from there another easy way to do this is just like if you've got c minor open the way i do in front of me you can just go down one note and see what the note is below it that's always going to be the seventh note of that chord that uh, that naturally appears in c minor so what we get here is what is referred to as an a flat major seven and then we go to a g dominant seven and again, why those are called that is, is going to be a topic for the future, for a future video I've been recording for so long, I don't want to get into too many things. But we're going to get this tonic dominant, then to a little bit more of an instable tonic, to a really f feeling, uh, to, to a dominant which feels sort of at its most unstable in this dominant seven chord, which is going to resolve really nicely back into our tonic. So as you can see, as I've gone through this progression and laid it out, thinking in terms of tonic, predominant, and dominant, I've allowed myself to tell a story just through the chords alone that kind of sounds like it's gone on a journey. So let's take a listen to this. sounds like something that's a little bit more musically complete and has gone on a little bit of a journey. And if I were to go through the same process I did in the last video of drawing in some chord tones on top of it, we could get a real sense of an interesting theme that might sound a little bit more like a complete thought than maybe what you were coming up with on your own. And one way to help this is to think about chords in terms of chord quality. If you have any questions, I know that this one was a heavy as far as information, please do leave those questions down in the comments. I would be happy to try and answer. And, and if you need further clarity, if I need to make another video on this topic, I will be happy to do so. But this is my attempt at talking about tonic, dominant, and predominant chords and how they apply to theme writing. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I will catch you all next time. Take care.